This weekend, we finally got an opportunity to dig into Anthem's VIP demo, and today I'm going to share my initial impressions on what we played, assuming you were lucky enough to connect to the servers. And let's just get that out of the way. The VIP demo launch was rough. Once the beta servers went live, players had trouble connecting for several hours, even days, and once they did, they were presented with major bugs, including loading errors, loss of earned rewards, even a bug that would not allow players to access additional javelins, the game's mech-type suits. That sucked, but I'm just going to move past it for the purposes of this video. Yes, it was an awful first impression for BioWare's first public demo of Anthem. It definitely dampened the community's excitement about the game. It was a nightmare way to have a demo launch, and I assume it'll be fixed by the launch of the game, because if it's not, it's going to kill it. All right, that's it. I'll speak no more of it. Let's talk about the actual game. This game looks good. The world around Fort Tarsus is lush with greenery, broken down tech, wildlife, rock formations, waterfalls, camps, and all manner of beautiful places to explore. In the demo, there were several caves to explore, each offering a different style that looked gorgeous and made me look forward to seeing what was next. I'm concerned about the actual overall size and breadth of the content that will ship with the full game. In the demo, it looked like we had access to a sizable chunk of the map, and I'm hoping we don't have a Destiny 1 beta situation where we're seeing like 25% of the full world in the beta. That would be a little bit concerning because, you know, you can explore the whole beta or the whole demo in not a whole lot of time. Enemy diversity was a bit limited in the demo. I certainly hope that there are far more baddies to destroy in the full game, but what I did see was pretty good. Some, like the elite Scar Hunters who had powerful machine guns and the ability to hover were great, allowing for multiple tactics to be employed while engaging. The Elite Scar Enforcer, on the other hand, carries a large shield and a flamethrower, and it was a bit less fun. He just kind of rushes at you using the shield to block most of the damage. The weak points are in the form of explosive canisters on their back, and the strategy just became shoot him, circle around back, shoot him some more until he turns to face you, then circle behind him again and rinse and repeat. At one point, I was in an area called The Mandible and was confronted by hunters, enforcers, and these little skittery spider things that would blow up if they got close. Staying in the air was important to stay away from the explodey guys, and staying on the move was necessary as the enforcers would continually lumber toward me and push me out of any cover I had, while the hunters, the whole time, they were peppering me with machine gun fire. It was hectic, but felt manageable and fun due to the abilities of my javelin. Players got a chance to fight a few more powerful enemies as well. The Swarm Tyrant was like this huge spider thing that was actually pretty cool. The arena you fight them in is massive, and flying about and using different abilities felt dynamic and rewarding. All at once, I found myself managing heat on my javelin to stay in flight mode, blasting the Tyrant with weapons and my ultimate ability, and using my other abilities to destroy mobs as they entered the arena, and to try and manage their numbers, and also to build up my ultimate. It was engaging, and it was pretty fun. And the main reason it was fun was because the javelins feel awesome. They look great, they feel great, the suits are highly customizable, functionally and cosmetically, they're animated well, and they have a feeling of weight and momentum that's hard to describe, but just feels right. In particular, when engaging flight mode, the animation and sound just makes it feel cool every single time. I spent most of my time playing as the Storm type after unlocking it. The Storm starts off with sort of a rapid fire freeze cannon, a powerful lightning blast that strikes enemies at very long distances, and a placeable shield. Uh, as well as an ultimate that actually drops down these like huge balls of energy, it does it like three times, and it does absolutely massive damage. But after playing for a bit, I swapped out the freeze cannon with a tracking lightning ball and the shield with this ability to warp short distances. I was very agile with that. I was able to customize my javelin to really kind of my preferred style of play, and I, I enjoyed that quite a bit. Weapons in the demo, though, they were a little underwhelming, partially due to the third person's perspective and also the fact that the Javelin's abilities are just so strong and have such short cooldowns that the weapons felt more like a backup 
than a primary form of dishing out destruction. The demo really only gives you access to limited numbers of guns, and better feeling and performing guns would probably be on offer from the main game later on, but the guns in the demo really didn't excite me in the way a first-person shooter can. There was very little feel or impact when using them, and they felt interchangeable for the most part. I just wanted to use whatever would give me the most DPS, and I didn't really feel any personality coming from them in the demo. I will say they did feel better when using a controller as compared to when using a mouse and keyboard, possibly due to the lack of feedback on the mouse and having rumble in the controller. But really, there was no, there was just no feel of the weapons themselves. To be honest though, the whole game just felt better with a controller. It's clearly been built with that input method in mind primarily. With a controller, flying felt intuitive and graceful. With a mouse and keyboard, it felt like I had about three too many beers before I hopped into my javelin. The mouse kind of operates as a joystick in flight mode. You move it left and you fly left, but to straighten out, you need to move the mouse back to center, which doesn't really feel natural. It got easier with practice, and there is like this on-screen indicator of like where your mouse is in relation to where you're moving, but it never really felt as good as using a controller. And swimming was just a nightmare with the mouse, like hardly functional. It needs to be improved dramatically for the release of the game. I would just remove the joystick feel and make movement of the mouse directly influence the direction of travel and leave it at that. Just make it more like a shooter control. Like, I don't understand why it's got to have this, like, joystick kind of interface to it. It's very odd. I play the demo on a PC, a powerful one, with an 8-core i7-9900K processor and an NVIDIA RTX 2080 Ti, both overclocked as high as I can go while still remaining stable, and found that the game taxed my system pretty hard. There's a frame rate cap also at 144 hertz, but that normally wasn't an issue as I was usually within 100 and 120 FPS and saw as low as 80 FPS regularly. And this is at 1080p. Now, I was at ultra settings, but with slower systems, especially those with fewer CPU cores, there are pretty wide reports of the game just maxing out the CPU. Definitely a problem if you want to stream and play the game from one PC. Hopefully this demo is an older build, and when the game comes out, it'll be better optimized, as well as getting optimized drivers for GPUs, but we're going to have to wait and see. There was pretty limited story in the demo, which was not all that exciting. Getting a looter shooter from Bioware, my hopes were to get something with some real meat on its bones in that department, but mostly we were just introduced to a few characters without any backstory or world building included. Not much to sink your teeth into. You do often have a couple of response options to how you reply to NPCs and conversations, but nothing that seems to matter. Just, oh, hey, I'm really nice, or I'm a bit gruff, but NPCs don't seem to react to the choices you make. We'll have to wait and see what the full game is like, but it didn't seem like it made a difference. Overall, though, I did enjoy my time playing Anthem. There is another demo coming up, and hopefully the servers will be in a lot better shape so that we can actually play more of the game uh, in February. And then when the game actually releases, hopefully we'll get to see that there, there is a more engaging story and that the weapons do end up making more of a difference once you get up to higher levels. But there's a lot that we still don't know about this game even after playing this demo. And while I am really enthusiastic about the game, I just don't know what the long-term outlook is going to be. What's the end game going to be and how engaging is it over the course of you know months or years? Uh, I will say that Bioware is all over social media and they talk very openly about the development of this game. And I'm sure that now that pl- more players have had a chance to play the game, they're going to be listening to feedback and hearing about you know what we liked and what we didn't like and making changes to the game. Now, those ge- changes might not come out for the initial release of the game, uh, but from the way they've talked and the way they interacted with the community over the last six months or so, uh, it is very telling, and I, I do believe that they will be watching uh, players' reactions to the game. So I'm looking forward to getting the full version of the game in my hands. I'm hoping that the, you know, the PC is much more optimized Uh, when they come out, or the PC version is much more optimized when the game actually comes out, uh, and that there is a lot more variety to enemies, weapons, and that the world is 
you know, as big as we hope it can be. I'm, I am a little concerned about the uh, the size and scope of the world that we'll be fighting in. But overall, I'm pretty enthusiastic. So let me know what you guys think. Did you get a chance to play the Anthem VIP demo? Did you actually log in? Were you able to log in? And uh, what would you actually think of the demo itself? Let me know down in the comments below. Thank you guys for watching. Hit that like button if you liked the video. Hit subscribe if you're new to the channel. And I'll see you guys next time. Thanks.